be the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. I greet everyone, those who visit us tonight with the peace of the Lord Jesus. It's a great joy to be here to praise the name of the Lord, to surrender, to give glory and honors to the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus. The Lord has already shown tonight that He wants to reveal, especially to a man here, as King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords. This is the King that He is in the throne tonight. And this is the King that is being praised here. And to this King that we say, Blessed be the Lord, glory to Jesus. It's good to serve the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord for this. And I invite the brethren. Open the word of the Lord, the gospel according to Mark. Mark chapter 15. Mark 15. Mark 15. We're going to read verse 37. The brethren are going to be standing for a couple of minutes. Mark fifteen thirty seven. The word of the Lord says the following. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was turned in two from top to bottom. So then the centurion who stood opposing opposite to him saw that he cried out like this and bread brethren he said he last he said truly this man was the son of god best be the name of the lord the church may be seated glorify the lord the son of god
Heute da. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God, my beloved. The text that we just read, the word of the Lord, speaks of a story that maybe is one of the most well-known in humanity. The story of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. The fact, a fact that happened that resulted and the opportunity of salvation of man. Jesus, he was taken to the cross. He carried our cross. He was crucified. And the inscription uh, on top of the cross was the King of the Jews. The Lord is I'm saying this because the Lord has shown that there's a man here that was curious because there was this expression on top of the Bible saying, King of the Jews. What is this? And Jesus was crucified like that, the King of the Jews. But at, the, this, th at that moment was a criticism, a satire. But there was not only the King of the Jews, was the King of the Kings, the Lord of Lords. And Jesus is our King. Jesus reigns in our hearts and our lives. And we can only say that Jesus is the Lord through the Spirit and the Spirit inhabited in us make us say that Jesus is the Lord Jesus is our King and the Lord has shown that tonight this man is going to have an experience with the royalty of Jesus because Jesus wants to be King in your life He wants to reign in your heart very well the crucifixion happened And at the moment, the final moment, Jesus shout to the Father, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There he was the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. God poured out all his love in the person of Jesus. At that moment, God turned his face because he was seeing his son in that condition, crucified like a, a common criminal, but without sin. Because Isaiah prophesied he took upon himself our pains, our sins, our difficulties, our problems. He took on, upon himself like a silent lamb. He went to the kill ground through his steps we are healed my brother there was the son of God as a father God suffered with that but it was all part of the project of salvation to man it was all part of the pact of the Lord of, of the father with the son because no one in the celestial hierarchy made themselves available to die for man. So the question was asked, who is going to die for man? Nobody made themselves available. But Jesus said, here I am, my father. I will die for man. I will give my life for them, for the sinners, for the flawed, for the imperf imperfect. I'm going to give my life to them. And there it was, Jesus, on the cross, in my place in your place because the cross was for you and for me but Jesus went to the cross for us he went to the cross for us what an amazing love what a wonderful love that's why we praise the name of the Lord every day very well the word I've just read says and Jesus crying out with loud voice and bread his last my brethren, when Jesus made this loud voice, shouted with a loud voice, it was a cry of suffering. Yes, it was. But the great cry that Jesus gave was a cry of awakening. Because at that great cry and this 
and cry echoes to this day and was telling everyone to each one of us to humanity I died for you I gave my life for for you that was the cry that echoes to this day this great shout was never silenced these 2,000 years of history this great cry one day echoed in my ears and I said Jesus I accept you as my Savior this great cry sounded on the ear of each one here and each one said Lord I accept you as my Savior I give worth to your sacrifice and this great shout is echoing tonight tonight is night of salvation have you already gave your life to Jesus have you accepted him as your the Savior of your life this is the great shout of awakening I died for you he gave this great shout and expired he gave his life the last breath of Jesus his left the last breath of life he gave himself for us and you know what happened according to the word so then when he expired then the veil was ripped from top to bottom the veil of the temple my beloved through the sacrifice of Jesus we have direct access to the Father my beloved the sacrifice of Jesus ripped the veil of separation the sacrifice of Jesus ripped the veil that separated men from the fellowship of the Father and today we exercise the universal priestlyhood of the Christian each one of us each one of those that accepted Jesus as their Savior can come to the Father pleading for the, the blood of Jesus his Son and the Father accept us and the heavens open up and the blessing of God is poured out the veil of the temple was ripped my brethren from the church of Pompano each one of us each one of you we all have access direct access to the Father it is wonderful isn't it what a blessing what an amazing thing the veil of the temple is ripped from top to bottom why was it not from the bottom to the top <laughs> But from top to bottom because salvation is an operation that comes from heaven from salvation comes from heaven and reaches man salvation is the result of the gr wonderful grace of Jesus the extraordinary love of the Father of an operation of the Holy Spirit of the Lord is a blessing that comes from heaven many people may want that God accept them in a different way I'm gonna do something good it's good to do good deeds it's good it's nice to be a good Christian yes but sometimes people begin to imagine that God will accept them or that they will be able to re achieve their salvation through the good works that, that they practice here I'm not saying that we are not supposed to do good works it's part of the life of the Christian of the Christian But salvation is not through work so nobody would bring glory to themselves the salvation is an action of mercy from God it's a gift from God salvation is a, a present from God that God gave and here it was the sacrifice of Jesus the veil of the temple is ripped in two from top to bottom we can give glory to the Lord at this moment a salvation was able to reach us a salvation that transformed our lives a salvation that transforms man's life it's not a static salvation of a moment of emotion no it's a salvation that leads man to have a new life and sanctification of the spirit it's an action but it's also lived through a process of sanctification so salvation was able to reach us and the centurion was there there was a man there who was an authority responsible for 100 soldiers he was 
in front of Jesus. He was seeing, he was contemplating what many others were also contemplating. But the Bible is also describes that the centurion was in front of Jesus. And at that moment, that man had an experience with the Lord. How many, many times are trying to have an experience, seeking an experience, and the Lord has also shown a, a man who is here seeking a treasure. Imagine, he's seeking it for a treasure and would dig and was trying to find it but could not find it. And the Lord also was showing that this man was almost giving up. But the Lord also has shown that tonight it was revealed to him an amazing treasure, a wonderful treasure. It was a treasure that he needed for his life. And the, Lord, the Lord also has shown that he had accepted this treasure. You know what this treasure what this treasure is? Salvation is the greatest treasure men can ever receive. There's no other treasure. A treasure, the most amazing treasure, the most precious treasure that men can have is salvation in Jesus because God He adds all the other things to us. God takes care of his servants, the saved in Jesus. And there was the centurion in the front of, in front of Jesus, seeing, trying to have an experience. He could have turned his face. The centurion could have done the same way as the other s people were doing this, uh, mocking Jesus, criticizing. Did you? Why, why can't you save yourself? You saved others. That's Those are the words that Jesus was listening to at that moment. But the centurion was a needy man, like all of us here. And God placed him in front of Jesus. And God, tonight, has placed you right in front of Jesus. Because Jesus is present, present in this place. He's revealing himself. And when the, that centurion saw that Jesus expired. First, he, the word says that first he saw that when he cried out, he expired, he saw and he heard the shout, the cry of Jesus. He saw Jesus expiring, giving him his life. So then the centurion said, truly, this man was the Son of God. So he recognized who Jesus was. And the question can be made tonight, who Jesus is for you? Who is Jesus? No, no, for me, Jesus was an amazing man. Very good. Oh, well, for me, Jesus was a revolutionary. Very good. Some people have ideas like that. For me, Jesus was a great man in humanity. Very good. People have their concepts about Jesus. Sometimes they have mistaken concept. But the centurion who was there, he had an experience with Jesus. He saw Jesus. He heard his cry. He recognized that Jesus gave his life for the love of that, that centurion to everyone else. Then he realized who that man was. Now I know who this man is. I used to hear about. I, I knew him from hearing about. But now I, rec I know him. I recognize his sacrifice. I accept this man. He is the son of God. Who Jesus is for you. If Jesus for you is the son of God. If Jesus for you is the Lord of Lords. If Jesus for you is the Savior, if Jesus for each one of us here is the one that gave his life, that loves you, the one that saved you, so then you recognize who Jesus is. You know who Jesus is. And tonight we can glorify the Lord here because Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus saved us. Jesus reached us. Jesus gave us this amazing treasure who is, which is his salvation. And Jesus is preparing through His Spirit the faithful church. 
the faithful church in this time that we know very well the time in which we are living in. The faithful church know uh, the time in which we are living, which is the time called soon. And this time called soon, the church being prepared is, is being sanctified and prepared by the Holy Spirit. Because the same Jesus that was crucified, that died and expired, he was buried. Yes, but on the third day he was resurrected. He is alive, and the life of the third day is the life that the church has, is the experience of resurrection. The church has fellowship, the legacy of resurrection. The church has the hope, and the church proclaims, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. It's a great message of the church. It has always been this. Jesus died, he crucified, he died, he resurrected, and he is alive. And the church, on this last time, the time called near, he, the church proclaims that Jesus is coming. Nobody knows the day and an hour, but Jesus will come soon. That's the greatest message. And we never uh, get tired of proclaiming this. The final church has this mission. The church goes and proclaims. And they announce this. And the church says every day, Maranatha. Because Maranatha for us is a, a simple name of the church. Maranatha is a hope. Maranatha for us is a great hope. Maranatha for us is the greatest desire of the church. Because when Jesus comes, he'll take us to heaven. Heaven is our place. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May God bless you. Find this treasure. Receive this treasure. Salvation. Salvation. Recognize the royalty of Jesus. You'll be able to say truly, this was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. He is the Lord. He is the Savior.
Lord to Jesus. The church standing up and glorifying the name of the Lord. Because has shown his grace. He has shown his mercy, his love, his ordinary love and infinite. He transforms, he restores, he saves. His presence satisfies our soul. Come and show your grace, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. We're going to praise, glorify the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Our church. May the peace be with you. It's your God that has spoken to you, to your hearts. I tell you, the sacrifice of my son was not in vain, but was to give salvation, the victory to your lives. My, my son, especially, speak to your life. I know it's been difficult, but I am your God. I redeemed you. Your life belongs to me. That's why I glorify my name. Your victory is decreed. My angel has been sent to give, give victory to each one of my servants. My church, glorify my name because I'm your God. I'm your God. And I've spoken to your hearts every day. I have sustained. You have blessed and given deliverance to us every day. Glorify my name. Is that God? They speak to your church.
We praise the Lord. We glorify you because we have found this amazing treasure. The Lord Jesus gave us this blessing of the great salvation. We praise you because Jesus is King of Kings. He's on the throne in the midst of His church. He's the one to guide us and govern the life of His servants. We praise you, Lord, for the sacrifice of Jesus. And we say, blessed be the name of the Lord for this, for this love that cannot be compared, this amazing love that once reached us. We praise the Lord for your salvation. And because tonight you have revealed to us as King of Kings a treasure that you have revealed, you have shown, uh, revealed, revealing yourself in the midst of this church, your church every day. Blessed be your name because it's good to serve you. It's good to be in your presence, praising your name and saying that we are waiting anxious for the great day of the second coming of Jesus because our, because our desire is to be with you in heaven. Operate, Lord, every instant in the in this church, in the life of the servant, and save many souls for the honor of your name. Receive the service in your presence. We pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say, the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be resting upon the entire faithful church of the Lord now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to God. The church may be seated. Our service come to its end. The ushers and deacons, each one of us, all of us here, are going to be ready to pray for you. For those who need, the appeal that we make here is if you understand that Jesus spoke to you in any way through the gifts, for this, through the songs, and through the word, we want to pray with you. And we send you with the peace of the Lord Jesus. The church will remain seated while we give assistance, especially to our visitors. Come on. 